Hey folks, Dan Freer here, the rate update. Welcome to 2022, where we're gonna talk about Nexus. What's going on with rates? All the traders are back, I'm back as well. What's that mean to the markets? And how did the jobs market fare last week? We're gonna talk about those two things next, so don't go away. Okay, so last week when I was gone, the only thing that really came out was, uh, was this jobs report. So let's listen to that right now. And then when we come back, I'm gonna go over what that's affecting the markets right now. And just all the traders being back, what's going on? You won't wanna miss this. Welcome back to Squawk Box. Breaking news, Rick Santelli here live at CME HQ. And you don't wanna miss this. Initial jobless claims, 198,000. Now, it's not a post-COVID low. It's 10,000 shy, but it's an awfully good number that reminds us that we are going back all the way into the late 60s to see numbers much lower than this. But here's the big news today. Continuing claims drops to 1,716,000. Why is that a big deal? Because if you look at the month of February, pre-COVID, February of 2020, the range for that entire month of continuing claims was 1,705,000 to 1,730,000. This number is right there. So it is a post-COVID low and it puts us in the same zip code as pre-COVID. And that is a rather large accomplishment. Unplugging and replugging the economy, the politicians think we ought to thank them, but there's an awful lot that just happens when you unplug and replug. And we're back into that zone. Now we did see some rather large revisions. Um, actually, I'm being a little facetious, very small revisions. Last week, the 205,000 on initial claims moves up 1,000 to 206, and on continuing claims, 1,859 turns into 1,856. But having said all of that, we know that holidays present special problems for calculating data, especially on the uh, claims front. So there may be some distortions here due to the holidays, but we'll take good news wherever we can get it. Okay, so let's wrap this all up. What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing jobs coming back, as I predicted. Now we're gonna start seeing the economy starting to st stabilize. The thing, the, the, the curveball here is the Omicron. I don't know about you guys, but during the uh, holiday season, I couldn't visit almost everybody I intended to see because of they had the virus. So that's going to play a havoc. That's going to push everything a little bit further. But again, when we start to get back to normal, what normal is, I don't know. But we get back to a little bit normalcy, we should see rates moving up. And depending on how far the can gets kicked, it's going to be how fast and how furious this, these adjustments are going to be. So let's get on and let's see what's going on in the markets right now that are kind of a little bit devastating right here. So we can see, as uh, Rick Santelli just said, the jobs report's coming in really good. So what's, what effect does that have on the markets right now? Well, let's go to the MBS market. And this is why people follow me. They're basically like, Dan, what's your crystal ball on what's going on with mortgage rates? Well, the biggest one of the biggest things I follow is this. And this is like, let's say, for example, you're trying to track the stock market. You might look at the S&P 500. You might look at the Dow Jones or something like that. At least gives you an idea what the general market is doing. What I follow is the mortgage-backed securities. Every mortgage person should follow this. Now, do they? Nope. Most people follow the 10-year treasury. And they're going to say, well, this is because of that or whatever. So let me, let me just explain this real quick. And this number up through here is playing a big role in why the MBSs are down 47 so let's look at this. These, if we're looking in this area right here, we have a mortgage-backed security. That's a bond that trades on Wall Street. We have a U.S. Treasury. It's a bond that trades on well, the, through the Treasury, but you can get it on Wall Street as well. Okay, so you you did figure out what you're going to invest in and why. Well, you're looking basically at yield. When the U.S. Treasury, the 10-year, gets above 150, 1 1.5 you're gonna start seeing money moving from different areas into treasuries, okay? People are gonna say, no way, nobody wants a one six yield. Well, check your savings account. You're probably getting 0.001, okay? So it beats nothing. So that's what's going on right now. You're seeing a lot of money coming out of all the other areas and moving into treasuries right now, okay? It's playing a huge havoc on the MBS markets right now. This should stabilize, 
okay? But rates are going to go up, guys. So what's going on right now? What do we know that's going on? Basically, just to look at the pure economics, supply, demand. You now have the mortgage-backed securities market, which is as big as it's always been. But you have the Federal Reserve starting to pull out. They're not going to buy $40 billion in treasuries a, a month. They're going to do 20. Well, that's $20 billion less. $20 billion. So that means demand just diminished. Okay, what happens when demand diminishes? Well, prices move. Prices drop to the point where somebody's willing to buy it. Okay, when the price drops on any bond, you're going to see yields going up. That's what's going on right now. We're getting back. We're getting some good news in the economy. That's bad news for mortgage rates, good news for the stock market. And you're going to start hopefully seeing a correlation there. So what normally happens is when the bond market's like this, the barn market starts to get hit, you're going to see people moving um, into more secure bonds, I'll say it that way. But the stock market's doing really well right now. You're seeing that take off as well as everything else. So let's see what economic news came in today that should play, a, play any role in this number being so big. And I'm going to get back to the MBSs here in a second. We have construction spending. Okay, what did it come in at? Well, it came in less than anticipated. So does that mean the market should crash? No. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the week and then I'm gonna go back to telling you why you know, MBSs are getting crushed so bad. Okay, so Tuesday, I'm gonna just teach you a little bit about the economic news that's coming out. What we're gonna watch is the job numbers. Jolt index is how many job openings there is, job openings, okay? That's gonna tell us how many jobs are out there. ADP numbers coming in, in on Wednesday, okay? So that's, that's going to tell us ADP is not very good at predicting these payroll numbers, but it's something to monitor. FOMC minutes, we're going to see the minutes from the last Fed meeting, what they said. And then on Thursday, we start to uh, see again on a weekly basis the initial jobless claims and continued jobless claims. Again, that's the jobs number. These are how many people are filing unemployment or continue to file unemployment. The JOLT index is how many people or how many jobs there, openings there are. So hopefully we move these people into these openings, okay? And then on Friday, we just start seeing a breakdown of the unemployment rates and then hourly worked and everything. So it is a big week for consumer uh, data. Today is nothing. So for us to be down, you know, this dramatic in one day, that, it's a pretty big move. Let's see how the day is progressing. Go down and click the whole day. Not a good trend, okay? So let me recap what the MBSs are. MBS is a mortgage-backed security. That it's a bond that trades on Wall Street that is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. This number here, it means the price, the price of the bond is down 47, 30 seconds. That's a big number, okay? I'm sorry, 47 basis points, so 0.47. I don't mean uh, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Um, you're going to see here, look at this. We're breaking a lot of our uh, Fibonacci levels. So let me explain Fibonacci's real quick. All the lines going across are what we call Fibonacci levels, okay? Those are basically, just think of these as uh, floors and ceilings that are put in that, that we should trade between. So the last Fibonacci level was right here at 101.8. Now we drop below that, okay? Um, I'm expecting us that we should be trading basically right in this range here, right between the 102.4 uh, and the 102.2. That's all the technicals that I'm reading where we should be trading. Just because I'm, I'd say we should be trading there doesn't mean we have to. So that's basically the top of our next Fibonacci levels right there. So I'm going to monitor this throughout the week. I think a lot of traders came in. They didn't cover their positions like they thought. They, they just moved. They're moving monies around. Uh, and again, it's the first trading day of the year. So there might be a lot of moving around of monies. Uh, the people didn't want to take profits last year or last week because they would have to pay gains on that money. So it's also tax issues. So as, as the week progresses, I'll give you more of a feedback where the general uh, thoughts are, where rates are going. In the long run, rates should get into the 4% ranges. When we get there, I don't know. And that's what I'm trying to protect you guys against. So please, uh, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit the bell every time we post a video. You get alert. I'll be back today talking about something real important in regards to real estate that you might really want to find out. And that's later today, about 4 or 5 o'clock. So please tune in then. God bless, guys. Thanks. I hope you had a great New Year's. A happy uh, Christmas. Welcome to 2022. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.